excess of HCl, watch precipitate. Same sort of thing, you're adding water and ammonium acetate because you don't want the precipitate to break up into colloidal suspension. Then you go to procedure 12, and here's the whole reason for being careful with your pH, because to separate arsenic from antimony and tin, you're going to use 12 molar HCl. The arsenic sulfide will not dissolve. So these things don't dissolve, and the other thing that doesn't dissolve is sulfur. Solution contains these two complex ions. That's how you dissolve it. So that's where you add the 12 molar HCl. Notice if you get it too acidic here, you start making these complexes and you start losing your antimony and tin in the part that I said you discard. The arsenic test is pretty straightforward. It says, oh, well, there are a couple things I have to explain. But you're, you're, this is procedure 12. Procedure 13 is the actual arsenic test. You're washing the precipitate again. He said all of that. You're adding water, etc. But the tricky part here, when you add the 16 molar HNO3, this is procedure 13. It says the precipitate disintegrates. It means it breaks up and it's just settling to the bottom of the test tube. Half of it settles to the bottom of the test tube, and the other half goes to the top of the test tube. What is not going to dissolve? The sulfur. So you're going to have sulfur in the bottom of the test tube, you're going to have sulfur at the top of the test tube floating, and in between, you're going to have. is in solution because the concentrated nitric acid converts arsenic 3 to arsenic 5 also. So this is what's in the solution phase. You don't want to save the sulfur again. So a lot of people are ending up with a lot of test tubes and they don't know which test tube to look at because each time I put an X it means you don't need that test tube anymore but people are afraid to throw things away. And so there they've got them. Uh, they say, what do I do with this? I don't have a label on it because I didn't need it. Or maybe I needed it and I forgot. All. In other words, that's the question you're facing. That, that happens every year. So remember, just save the things that are going to the next procedure, except way back here in procedure six, you definitely want it to label and save it. Save it because now we're getting back to it. The rest of the arsenic test, once you've gotten rid of the sulfur here, it says you want to evaporate the dryness, don't bake, and you're going to convert it to uh, arsenic, five micro arsenic 5 oxide. Dry, don't bake. You're going to add silver nitrate. And what should happen, and I'm looking for a place to write this, First of all, the water from the silver nitrate is going to convert this to arsenic acid again, to what? Uh, three, got it made. So there's, there's what happens when you add the water. If you have too much acid, this still forms, but here's the trick that you need. This is your confirmatory precipitate. It's red-brown. 
But if you didn't get rid of all of your acid here, and you have too much excess acid, this is more soluble in acid. I mean, this is soluble in acid, so you don't make the precipitate. So what it says is if you don't get the precipitate, you add some sodium acetate. And again, our concentration is about twice what it says in the procedure, but it works. And when you add sodium acetate, it forms a buffer solution with the hydrogen ions here. And we'll do calculations about buffer solutions in another day or two in the lecture. Then it doesn't tell you what to do next. You've got this reddish brown precipitate in the casserole. Transfer to a test tube. Centrifuge and save it. In other words, it leaves you sitting there with the red-orange precipitate and the casserole, and you want to get it into a test tube to save to show me for your confirmatory tests. Then we're going to procedure 14 because that's the confirmatory test, that silver arsenate. But it says the decantate from procedure 12, way back here, this thing that I didn't say anything. It's sitting there in a test tube. Make sure you label it before you put it away. Hey, it says put it in a casserole, heat it, and I'm going to take up with this next time. I'm going to stop talking in a second. But if anybody gets there, it says you add water and everything, and it says take four dots and do 14A, and it doesn't say what else to do. But it, later on, after you've cleaned everything up and you get to 14B, it says to the rest of the material in the casserole. So what I always say when you get to this one, heat in the casserole, Divide it into two parts right away. That way you won't lose anything. Put it into the test tube, centrifuge, get rid of any precipitate that's left after you heat it in the casserole. Then you divide it into two parts for 14A, 14B. Okay. So I'm going to stop right there.